Welcome back to the channel. Today we are pressure canning chicken stock. We called all of our chickens about two weeks ago, our first round of meat birds, and we sold a few, we kept a few that are pieced out in the freezer, we kept a few whole, and then the ones that we pieced out, we have made chicken stock out of those carcasses. I believe there were five, car five carcasses that we used for that. And uh, this has been simmering uh, for like two days on low to very um, medium low heat. You wanna kinda of keep it at that just simmering stage. I don't know too much about the recipe or the details of it. I leave that up to Rhett with him and his background in restaurant industry. This kind of side of things is more his wheelhouse and then this side of things is more my wheelhouse. So now that the broth is finished and up to his specifications, I am pressure canning it. So if you've never pressure canned before, I'm gonna do a little bit of a tutorial as we go. So feel free to just, you know, skip that first portion or what have you, and then we'll, we'll carry on here. Uh, so we have the 21 quart all American pressure canner. I'm actually gonna spin it around here because I need this portion in the front. Um, this thing is amazing. It really is, in my opinion, the only way to go with pressure canners. Um, it has this awesome gigantic lid that hooks onto it and then these toggles do come up to seal it closed. Everyone's really worried about pressure canning. They say it's really dangerous and I mean any form of cooking can be dangerous if you do it wrong. Uh, deep frying can be really dangerous, right? So you just have to make sure you do it right and that you follow the steps. So because we are pressure canning something warm, our broth is still warm. I wouldn't say it's hot, hot, but it's warm enough. Then we need to start the canner warm and our jars need to be warm. You don't actually have to sterilize your jars when it comes to pressure canning, which was a bit of a mind blow for me because I just have that in me that you have to sterilize your jars, right? but you don't have to. And the reason is, is because this gets so hot that it'll actually sterilize them in the process. I do actually pressure can a lot of things from cold. So the canner is cold, the water's cold, the product is cold. It all goes in, heats up together. Um, but because we are dealing with a hot product, we're doing it hot, we're starting hot. So that sterilization process will happen as you go. I have my rims and my lids here. I have some vinegar here for just sterilizing the jars as we go. We will actually put a little bit of vinegar in the water as well. Just about two tablespoons of vinegar. You can eyeball that, it's really not that impertinent that we get it exact. There's about two inches of water in the bottom and that is about all you ever add to your pressure canner is two inches of water and that will sustain it through the whole process. So that water is coming up to just below a simmer right now. And then we will work on filling our jars in that process as we go along as well here. Because I have to start with my jars hot, I do have them in the oven here. If you can see that, they're on a tray. I set the oven to 220. That's usually what I do when I water bath can, so the jars are actually at like a boiling temperature. Um, like I said before, we don't have to sterilize them. I'm essentially just doing this so that the jars are hot in order to handle the hot product. If you have cold jars, hot product, that's where you get breakage. If you put cold jars into hot water, that's where they're going to break. So you need everything to be in that ballpark of the same temperature, which is why I have the jars in here. It's also just a, bit, a good place to store them during this process as well. So if they're kind of out of the way, you can pull them out one at a time. Clean cloths, you always wanna have a lot of clean cloths around and oil. So you do want to oil the rim of your pressure canner and this is to keep the lid from sticking. We're not gonna excessively do this. I've just put like a little drop on my fingertips there and you're just gonna run your fingertips around the edge of the canner and just enough to make it slick. Doesn't need to be dripping, doesn't need to even be super visible. You just want it to be slick. Uh, you will do that at the beginning of every time you pressure can and that's just to keep it from sticking to the lid. So, all right, I think we're about ready to go here. I have vinegar in a bowl and a very clean new rag that we're going to use to sterilize the rims of the jars. Um, you usually do wipe your rims when you're canning anything, but when it comes to anything meat-based, you want it sterile. So we use that white vinegar to sterilize the lids. So I've got a funnel for the jars. I also have some cheese cloth, which we're actually going to line the funnel with in order to catch any bits and pieces that we don't actually want in our jar. So cheesecloth is pretty, ready, pretty readily available and a staple for homesteaders. So we're gonna use that to strain as we go. 
And I think we're ready for some of the jars here. So we're gonna pull these out. Okay, we're ready to start filling our jars. I have the cheesecloth here. I have all my jars on the counter. They are hot and ready to go. And this broth looks amazing. So in order to get started here, we're just gonna use the biggest measuring cup I have. And we're just gonna scoop the broth right into the jars. This is a little taller than I'm used to. Normally the pot is about the same height as the jar. Um, so it might actually be helpful to have something to put the jars on to actually make them that same height. Okay, I just stole our cloth bin to put the jars on so that they're the same height of the jars. The nice thing I like about this funnel is the wide rim around it because as you can see, I actually have that rim just breaching the lip of the pot. So that way when I scoop in and pour, I'm not actually gonna be getting really any spillage. This is probably the thickest broth I've ever seen in my life, it looks. Absolutely unbelievable. Bentley has been hovering around the kitchen for two days because obviously it smells unbelievable. And he's had a little bit of treat on his food with it. He obviously loves it. Um, and I am hoping we're going to have enough here to fill all four jars. I'm going to put my full jars on the other side because that's where my lids and rims are and then we'll top them all off at the same time. And we're just going to keep this process going until we have all the seven jars ready to go. Okay, all of our jars are full. I am so pleased with how they look and I actually almost used all of the broth. There is just like a little bit of stock left. I don't even know if you can see that. My plan was to freeze the rest, but I really didn't want to end up with a bunch of frozen broth. And this will actually be like the perfect amount for just one or two uses. Uh, I didn't want to leave a ton of broth in the freezer. I'd much rather have them this way. I did overfill a couple of my jars. Uh, this is a bit of a, a unique trick, but you can get these little like syringes anywhere. And I'm actually just going to syringe out some broth and put it in a different jar so that I can um, make sure that they're all leveled out properly. I'm just gonna give this a quick rinse and make sure it's clean and then we'll get going. Does seem like a bit of a funny trick. These things always remind me of My Girl. If you've ever seen that movie, you know why. But we're just gonna pop it into the jar. Pull out some broth. We want about a one inch headspace, so that's what we're aiming for. I was a little conservative on my first couple ones, so we can always use that to top it up. Or if your jars are at the right level, We'll just squeeze that back in the broth itself. I think that was the only jar I was kind of concerned about the water, the level at, so we're just gonna take it out of that one. But again, these are great for just making sure your levels are right without making a huge mess at the tops of the jars. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to sterilize the tops of our jars. Always use a very, very clean rag for this. And then I have a bowl of vinegar, straight vinegar, white vinegar. And you're just gonna really, really well wipe the rims of these jars. The reason why you're using vinegar is because of the fat content in meat. Uh, you want that fat off the rim if there has been any dripping and that fat will prevent your jars from sealing. So if you pull these out of the canner and one or two is not sealed, it's most likely because you had some fat particles on, on your rim. And so you want to make sure that that is really, really, really clean. That should about do it. If you dip back in your vinegar, you do want to use a clean portion of the rag. You don't want that fat ending up in your vinegar and then contaminating your rag. All right. Every single one of these is getting a lid and a rim. The other nice thing about pressure canning is when you put your jars in the canner, you don't have to worry about scalding your hands uh, because the water is only two inches deep. So we'll just rest that right in there. When you put your rim on, we're just doing it finger tight. No need to like ratchet or really crank it, just finger tight. And you do want to make sure that liquid doesn't slosh around too much. We don't want it splashing up and onto the rim because obviously our rim was just cleaned and sanitized. The 
the All American 21 quart pressure canner will hold seven quart jars. 21 quart refers to the amount of liquid it can hold with nothing in it. So seven jars is what we can handle in here. If we used pint jars, there is actually a secondary shelf, which looks like this. And you would put your pint jars in, you put your shelf on, and you put another set of pint jars in. So that is an option if that's the way you want to go when you're pressure canning. I do pressure can some things in smaller jars, like meat, for instance, because that's enough for one meal. But with something like broth, you're using this for a soup or something a little you know, more concentrated. So we're, we are gonna do the full quart jars. Okay, those are all in there. The next stage is to get this thing going. Before we start this, one last thing. People always ask me, is pressure canning safe? Can you really pressure can your own chicken broth and have it be safe? And my answer to you is, this is canned chicken broth that you buy from the store all the time and it's perfectly safe. Now, yes, when you do it yourself, you do have to follow some guidelines in order for it to be safe, but there's really no difference between this and that, except this is made from chickens that we raised ourselves and broth that we made ourselves, so we know the full contents of what's in it versus the preservatives that are in that. Okay, pressure canning is a step-by-step -step process that you do want to make sure you get right. Now I'm going to shut off my oven because I don't have jars in there anymore. So there is a small dent on the front of your canner here. There is an arrow on the lid of your pressure canner. You want that dent and that arrow to line up. I just took the weighted gauge off because we don't want that on for the first portion. I'm just going to set that aside. So that arrow and that dent line up and then you give your little canner uh, lid a spin. Now, it should spin so that these divots here line up because we're going to take these toggles and you're going to do opposite toggles. You're going to bring them up and over and screw them down just until they're, they're like lightly snug. Then you're going to take opposite two more, bring them up and over until they're nice and snug. Last two. Nice and snug. Now snug does not mean tight. So now we're going to go back to our original two. Give them a crank. Crank those ones. Crank those ones. We're going to do it again. Crank until, ooh, see that? That's what you want. The other thing you want to do is you actually want to make sure your lid is on even. You can have it gapped a little higher on one side or the other. So you want to get down about eye level. Still a little uneven. There we go. That's why it's important to toggle the opposites because if you start with this one and work your way around, you're going to end up with a tilted lid and that's not good. That looks perfect. Okay. This right here is your gauge. This is why I love the All-American is because the gauge uh, combined it with the weight is really, really precise. And that to me is heightened level of safety. Okay, we're now ready to crank our heat. We're going to crank it to high to start with because what we're gonna do is we want the pressure to build in here until this is boiling and we have a solid vent coming out of here. Uh, the vent, when you put your hand over it, will be a bit steamy and hot, and that's going to really start sputtering water out of there and venting and act like a bit of a train whistle, but it doesn't make a whistly sound. And we let that vent for 10 minutes before we actually start the process of physically pressure canning. Okay, so this is actually going to come to temperature. While we do that, I am going to show you how I like to freeze things like chicken broth because I don't like putting it all in a big Ziploc and having a huge chunk. I like things frozen in smaller quantities so you can pull it out in smaller, smaller quantities. So while this is coming to temperature and boiling and starting to vent, we're going to move on and do that. Okay, so what I like to do here is I like to get different sized bowls or containers. These are just reusable containers that we use for like lunches and stuff like that. You can use bowls or whatever you like. I've actually even used ice cube trays. And we're going to put the broth in these bowls. They're all different sizes, which is what I like. So you can kind of pick the size you want. 
We are still going to use our strainer to just strain out any bits as we go. There's not a lot of broth left. Um, it might actually be worthwhile to put it in a smaller <laughs> container or to actually take out all the big chunks before we get started. So let's do that. We have this huge handled strainer and uh, I think it's left over from Rhett's industrial kitchen days and sometimes I think, why the heck do we have this? What is this good for? And then stuff like this happens and it's the perfect tool. We pull that out so that we can manage this a little bit easier. I'm gonna set this aside. We can now hear a little bit of venting. I don't know if you can hear it, but if you put your hand above it, there's just a slight warm steam coming out of there. This is not a full vent yet. When it reaches a full vent, then we're going to put on a timer for 10 minutes, which we'll do that when it gets there. There's just a little bit of tiny broth in this left, so we're gonna pour that into our freezable containers. Still straining. We are now at a full vent. You can hear the jars kind of rattling around in there. I think you can audibly hear that venting. We are now going to vent this for 10 minutes. No wait, we're not changing the heat on the stove. We're gonna let that go as it is for 10 minutes. So start that timer. Okay, our 10 minute timer is started for the venting, so that's going. Uh, when that is finished venting, then we'll move on to the next stage of pressure canning. Here is our broth for the freezer. It's just in little containers here. What I will now do is I will put this tray in our deep freeze and let these freeze up. When they are all frozen and ready to go, they will come out of here and then go into a Ziploc bag and then that Ziploc bag will either go in the freezer or will uh, vacuum seal it depending on how we want it to freeze long term. I feel like this is the stage of pressure canning where people start to get nervous because stuff starts happening and you're like, oh my goodness, should water be coming out? Oh my goodness, should it be making that much noise? What's happening? This is all perfectly normal. The water is boiling. The jars are reacting to that boiling water. The boiling water is creating steam. It's coming out of that vent. With the steam, it's going to come a little bit of water. This is all fine. Um, and you just have to wait this out for 10 minutes and then we'll start pressure canning. That's when people will really start getting scared, but we'll walk you through that as well. In the meantime, I'm going to take that out of the freezer. Okay, we have now been venting for 10 minutes. You can hear this thing's going crazy. So this is what we're going to put our weighted gauge on. Our weighted gauge here, you can see it has a 5, 10, and 15. For our elevation, we pressure can at 15 pounds of pressure. So that little 15 is going to go on our weighted gauge like that. Okay, things are going to get quiet and our dial is going to start to increase. So essentially, once your weighted gauge is on, you will now watch your needle come up to the pound of pressure that you need to be at. So for us, it's 15 pounds of pressure. This thing was pressure canning already at five pounds of pressure. So if you live like at sea level, you only need to pressure can at five pounds. Of at five pounds. Um, but for us, it's 15. So that needle's already at seven and pushing eight pounds of pressure. 20 pounds of pressure is when it quote unquote gets dangerous, okay? So 15 pounds of pressure is still five pounds away from the danger zone. And once that needle gets to 10 pounds of pressure, it rises incredibly slowly. So that's when you kind of start to realize like, okay, like we're all right. I still get a little like heart fluttery when I pressure can just cause I'm, I'm that type of person that, you know, has to handle the anxiety of it. But uh, honestly, you just get used to it. So once our pressure can gets to 15 or actually right around that 13, 14 pounds, this is going to start to rattle. And that's what we want because that rattling releases pressure. So it keeps it from going too high, but the weight of the gauge then seals that hole and then allows it to come to pressure. So that weight is actually what's controlling your 15 pounds of pressure. So when the pressure gets a little more than 15 pounds, it rattles and releases pressure. When that pressure starts to reach 15 pounds, it stops rattling, okay? So that's how this works. Um, I love it, it's, it's awesome. So we're at 11 pounds now and increasing. When we start getting to 14 pounds, it's probably, I'm actually probably gonna turn the heat down now to maybe 6.5 and let that come up a little bit slower just so it's not as intense. 
As this is reaching pressure, I'm actually going to talk about what happens when it's at pressure, because it's at pressure and that starts rattling and gets really loud. So when this reaches pressure of 15 pounds, that's when we start our cook timer. That's when your actual processing time begins. So with chicken broth, we are pressure canning for 25 minutes, but that 25 minute timer does not start until your needle reaches 15. Now, if your needle drops below 15, you need to raise your pressure counter back to pressure and start your timer from scratch. This has to pressure can at that intensity for the full 25 minutes. When the 25 minutes is over, we shut off our heat. We don't touch anything, we just shut off our heat, which we'll go over again at the end. Uh, we're now at 13 pounds and this should start rattling fairly soon. I have my temperature on the stove right now at 6.5. I can hear that it's calmed down a little bit in there. In order to keep this at 15 pounds, I find I need about a medium to medium high heat. And medium high means like max 5.56 on your, on your dial. You'll get used to it. You, and that's all part of pressure canning as well as every oven is different. Pressure canning in our old place, I actually found it more difficult to keep temperature where this is actually easier to keep temperature because I'm dealing with a digital clock where before, or digital um, heat grade where before I was dealing with a knob. So every oven is gonna be different and you will have to get used to that, that range of pressure versus temperature. Uh, we are at 14, 13 and a half pounds. I'm gonna keep this at 6.5. If I notice the needle gets past 15, I will notch the heat down again, but we'll let it get to pressure and see if it can maintain itself. Okay, we are at 15 pounds of pressure, and you can hear that the weighted gauge is rattling quite a bit, which is good. Um, it does take a really long time for it to finally get that last point of pressure from 14 to 15, but we're there. So this is when we can start our timer for 15 minutes. If you find the heat gets too high, you want to turn it down. If it gets too low, you have to turn it up and then restart your timer. Uh, Safety of pressure canning. When you're pressure canning, you are not doing anything else. You are not taking a shower. You are not gardening. You are not doing anything else. You are pressure canning. That is all you're doing. So this is the time when you want to clean the kitchen. You need to hang around your pressure canner to make sure that it stays at pressure. Uh, because we're only doing this for 25 minutes, that's not so bad. When you pressure can some things, it's 60, 75, 90 minutes of this, okay? So that can get quite tedious. So make sure you're in the kitchen. There have been times I've literally sat on a stool in the kitchen and like watched Netflix on my laptop while I was watching the pressure counter. So this is a lengthy process. You wanna make sure you have the time set aside. Because we're only doing 25 minutes, this is pretty easy to be honest with you. Um, so we're gonna let this go for 25 minutes. We're gonna watch our temperature. We're gonna watch our pressure. We're gonna watch all of that, make sure it stays. And then at the end of 25 minutes, I will show you what to do next. This is pressure canning. We're doing it. Does it look dangerous? Doesn't look super dangerous to me. You just have to make sure you follow the rules and you pay attention and you are in charge of this. The pressure canner is not in charge. You're in charge. Make sure you are sticking around it and watching it do the thing. See you in 25 minutes. Okay, we have been pressure canning for 25 minutes. This is now finished pressure canning. Do not touch your pressure counter. Turn your heat off. That's all. Just turn the heat off. You don't want to move the pressure counter. You don't want to take the weighted gauge off. We just turn the heat off. Now what we do is we wait for this dial to come all the way down to zero. This can take a while. This can take like 20 minutes. So we're just letting it cool off now. We're just letting it come out of pressure state. This will stop rattling once it gets down to like 13, 12, or no, actually like 14, 13 pounds of pressure. It will stop rattling and just sit there. Don't take it off. Just let it sit. Once this comes all the way down to zero, then we will take the weighted gauge off. Until then, you just let it sit. This would be the time when it, uh, when you see that dial start coming down. This is when it's, oh, that's already stopping. This is when it becomes safe to leave your pressure counter alone. So if you wanted to go clean up or go have a shower, this is usually when I do it. Because once that dial starts coming down, that's when it becomes out of pressure. And obviously you can see the dial gauge is already calming down. Um, so yeah, pressure canning is a big waiting game, really. You wait for it to come to pressure, you wait for it to vent, you wait for it to actually pressure can. 
and then you wait for it to come out of pressure and then you wait for it to vent and then you're done. So once this is done coming down from pressure, then we will do our next step. Okay, we have reached zero pounds of pressure. That to me is the most annoying part of this whole process is waiting for the needle to come down. Once your needle drops all the way to zero, you can take your weighted gauge off. It is going to be exceptionally hot. Make sure you do that with something safe. It's now venting again. So we're kind of working backwards. It's like you reach all the way up this pinnacle and then you come all the way back down, back to where you started. So venting, that's nice and warm. Keep your hand above that, right? You can feel that coming out. 10 minutes, another 10 minutes, we're gonna let this vent. You can kind of hear all the jars rumbling in there a little bit, totally normal, totally fine. But we're gonna let the rest of the steam come out over the next 10 minutes and then we're gonna take our lid off. Almost done. Okay, it's been 10 minutes. We just keep waiting. Uh, all right, so we're essentially fully done our process now. We can take the lid off, take the jars out. We do take the lid off the same way we put it on, so we will untoggle opposites all the way around and start just by loosening them. You may find, I always find, that they're like on here way tighter than when we started. <laughs> oh. And this thing will be, like everything about this is smoking hot. Like these are hot. Everything's gonna be really hot, so you just wanna be careful. Uh, you could do this with some sort of gloves or oven mitts on your call and we're just going to drop these down. When it comes to lifting the lid off, you do want to do it safely. So when you spin it off, make sure you tilt it to the back of your stove to make sure all of that steam can come out the back. And then you can just simply lift it and move it to the side. Okay, we're going to pull these jars out and then we are all wrapped up. Okay, I actually let these jars sit with the lid off for quite a while because the broth was really boiling still in the actual physical jars and so I wanted that temperature to come down before I pulled them out of the pressure canner. Um, I have four out, they look great, I have three more to go. I am using your classic jar grabber just because these are scalding, scalding hot. You do want to keep them as upright as possible when pulling them out so that we're not compromising that seal. All in all, again, we got seven quarts of broth. That was a really, really concentrated broth from five um, chicken carcasses. And that whole pot we started with was actually full. It got reduced down about a third. And then two thirds of that pot now gave us our seven quarts plus what we froze. And these are from chickens we raised ourselves. This is our first round of meat birds, which has been really exciting uh, to have those birds from chicks all the way to uh, harvesting them ourselves and then making obviously preservations out of them as well. Here we are. All done, seven quarts of chicken broth, homemade chicken broth from chickens we raised ourselves, as well as a guide to pressure canning. Anyway, we will wrap it there. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, again, let us know if you learned something. We'd love to learn from you. All right, take care, guys.